So I had a nice massage in the morning and Kerala massage, feeling very fresh out here, very refreshing to be here. Okay. The only challenge I face, Mr. Das has set the standard very high, one of the oldest mutual fund, okay, one of the largest mutual fund, hundreds of branches, hundreds of sales people. Uh, we are very youngest house, one of the smallest mutual fund, but the fastest growing. Okay. We have one office, one salesperson. But we take away 20% of the incremental equity flow every month. And why? Because we have thousands of our sales representatives in your form of IFA, MFD. That's our strength. We are dependent on you. Can you reduce the volume a bit? It's slightly going. Just volume, reduce a bit. So we are dependent on you. So Quant proposes or working on a model which is dependent on intermediaries like you. So if you don't sell us, we are not sold. Okay. 60%, 65% of our incremental flow now comes from MFD and IFAs. So it'll give you a perspective how we have. This business is very simple. It's a performance-led business. Okay. I call this business in a very simple term. People have made it very complex. Long term, consistent. I will talk about few things, not as a contrary to the industry, but give you a perspective how new way of looking at how we educate people, how we break the myths, what is prevailing in the market. Let's talk about a thesis uh, being relevant. Everybody wants to keep himself or herself relevant. This is the title of the book I have written, This is a, but it's a philosophy. The new book which you will see in a month's time, we are talking about how the great transition will unfold between 2017 and 2047. So in this book, we have talked about how world would be by 2047, how financial market would be, how Indian market would be. So let me give you some interesting perspective, then I come to the small parts of the presentation. We talk about concept of predictive analytics. Instead of doing a postmortem analysis, you listen to the calls, event is over, and then you tend to react because you say, I have full data points. Okay? So what we call it postmortem analysis. By the time a big opportunity is lost. Sometimes people preempt. That is also not a great strategy because people work on gut feeling. People say it's my view. I personally feel this is the way it will happen. So you preempt. That is also not a great strategy. We bring the concept of predictive analytics, which is very interesting data points. How as a house of quant, when we say we quantify everything, it's a number centric house. How we quantify behavior, how we quantify geopolitical volatility. You must be wondering how you can forecast geopolitical volatility. So let me give you a small example, how market employed data works. Okay. Very interesting thing, how market employed data, okay. Or how market employed analytics, what we call it. You can reverse calculate. I'll give you some example. So last Monday we had our monthly call and we talked about how risk on rally is on the horizon. Contrary to the whole industry, which is very much worried, the market has peaked out. Everything is doomed out there. Global geopolitical volatility is spiking. So let me give you pointer by pointers. We'll explain you. Then I will take few slides. Okay. First most important point. Either you look at something like Let's say yields have given breakout above 5%. I'm talking about USD 10 years yield because too much hype was there. It's broken 10%. New level will come. Similarly, we were the gold is moving up, crude is moving up. And so is the case people are worried about the risk of face. Okay. Everything you can think and then you have Middle East problem on the uh, geopolitical front. So let me give you some interesting example. Let's look at geopolitical volatility first. Okay, let's understand what is narrative we have been, you are hearing or being sold. Short term is all about narrative. Long term, when you get a reality, the reality is very different from the narrative what we have seen. Let's take example of crude. So in this battle of Israel happen at the border of, or rather in Middle East itself, and it's happening at the border of Egypt where you have Swiss Canal. So anything goes wrong, the crude prices can spike. Now let's look at first week of July, uh, October, this battle started. And now, crude has corrected 13%, 1.3. Okay, whole world thinks other way. But crude is not giving you that indication. This is what we call it. When you reverse calculate and say, at least the biggest uh, question was on crude. Crude has not given you an indication. Either you say it's big or We have talked about crude or energy prices rallying in the month of May. We said that between June to September, uh, energy prices will be 
JPY and Swiss franc will depreciate and it happened and that's the reason we talked about there could be event risk but it played out in first week of October so we talked about a rally and energy prices which happened and since then we're talking about the crude has peaked out look at the data reality is crude is down 13 percent everybody is worried about geopolitical aspect let's look at the second data points which we talk about volatility cycle so we have been talking about how between 2018 till 2023 the employed walls of the global market will remain very elevated okay what it means it means extraordinary choppiness will be there in the most of the asset classes okay which happened 2018 was very volatile it was a bad year and the volatility moved up 19 was slightly lower 20 was the horrible year and so is the case with 21 was slightly low 2022 was equally spike in terms of walls and so is the case in 2023 now let's come back and say so our volatility cycle is peaking out now this is what the phenomena we want to explain either you say is spiking or is peaking out so the interpretation changes because we are number centric data centric people we are talking about and we work on predictive analytics our models are suggesting the employed walls of the global asset classes are peaking out which means the 2024 will be much more calmer than what you have seen in the past Another important data point to conclude, by end of December 2023, that cycle peaks out. We believe that either is already peaked out, maybe it peaked out on higher side by November end. Okay. Now look at the second data points about gold. I explained you about crude. Okay. Uh, before crude, I also talk about natural gas. We believe that natural gas also spiked. It, you will see a sharp correction in natural gas prices also globally next 15 days, next 20 days. Okay. Now let's look at gold. Gold has rallied a lot. Okay, we also increased our exposure in the our multi-asset fund. Okay, nearly a month back, we also ex still expect gold has potential to move up. Now our phenomena is that gold will also peak out. Okay, when it can peak out as early as month of November itself. Okay, now this is how, how mathematically we decode. We are not have a god status to forecast we are not astrologer to talk about we connect the dot and tell you how how we forecasted in the month of may the june to september energy prices rally it rallied and it rallied 30 to 50 percent so if gold is going to peak out whenever it happens we expect by end november it should happen that will be a further endorsement of geopolitical volatility settling down okay now look at the scenario your crude has already peaked out rather is in corrective mood natural gas has peaked out corrective mood Gold with a lag effect can will peak out and again it correct. Okay, uh, so is the case with gold. If you recollect, everybody got very excited about post-Russian war and the Ukraine war about gold, and nobody made money. Okay, people were skewed towards gold in a big way, and for more than one and a half years passed, and people suffered and they got capitulated in the month of September at the bottom of the cycle. Now let's talk about some other data points. So we have covered natural gas, we have covered gold. Let's talk about yield for a minute. Okay. We stock, we have been talking about in our book also in 2019, we have written that from 2020 onwards, inflation will rally. In, in, uh, the de developed market yield will spike significantly. We believe it they are in structured bull run, it can remain elevated for a longer period of time. But if I have to look at one is structured bull run, other is the looking from a medium term perspective of cyclical bull run is over. So we believe that yields have also either peaked out or in the final phases of peaking out. It's already corrected from 5.12 to 4.5 or something or 4.33 yesterday. So what we are trying to say is how you look at yields either spiking or peaking out. We believe it's peaked out from a near and medium term perspective, not from the long term perspective, long term perspective by 2028, we believe the ugly picture will come. We are our view is 9 to 12 percent in US yield, not for India, but for developed market is what we have written in the previous book also. So let's come back. Let's look at India centric data. I always say in my 30 years of my career, I have never seen such phenomenal macro for India. So when we talk about macro on absolute basis, macro on relative basis, great situation. So India remain buy on dips for a longer term perspective. This decade belongs to us and half century belongs to us. I am not going to talk about the very bullish picture because no moves are linear. I am not a great believer of long term thesis because mathematically we can demonstrate if you are talking about long term, you are hiding behind your non-performance also. 
I look at everything from a risk perspective. There are two only things which works mathematically out here. This is the business of theory of probability. If you can keep on identifying your winning traits and if you manage your risk properly, you will be winner. Because managing long term risk is very easy. You can hide, as I said, you can hide behind your non performance because it's average outs. It doesn't matter. And hence, everybody talks about long term. Globally, a lot of things have changed. If you manage your medium term, near term, and short term risk better, not only you control the risk, but you generate alpha out of it. And this is the strength what we talk about dynamic style of money management, talking about adding alpha and subtracting the beta. So, idea is to generate superior risk adjusted returns. That does not mean that you should take unwarranted risk. So let's talk two more minutes. Something we want to talk about or risk on environment which I'm talking about is knocking our doors. So in April 2020, when market corrected sharply post COVID event I'm talking about, everybody was very much scared. If I have to mathematically decode, I always give this example where we talk about how risk appetite collapsed to multi decades low. Okay, it was multi decades low and you can always see that the conviction was missing. Everybody was scared of their life, forget investing in the market, that level of scare was there. Okay, liquidity was very high because all central banks put in extra effort when there is a crisis, the liquidity was high and this is another phenomena which we are looking now also when there is a crisis going on, all central banks will put in effort to ease out the liquidity, that's the reason Fed has not raised the increase rate, increase the rates for last two meetings. Okay, so it's again data driven approach. So risk appetite lowest, liquidity highest, deadly combination for a lethal combination, I call it for a bull run, which played out beautifully. Come September 2021, risk appetite peaked out, liquidity was shrinking, and money flow towards global asset was highest ever in the history. When I say history, we have 40, 50 years of data, we don't have data. Uh, uh, beyond that. So a classic combination how risk appetite peaked out and market peaked out, technology stock cycle peaked out, new age cycle peaked out and so growth cycle also peaked out. We shifted our portfolio from growth to value. So we are not believer of thesis growth forever, I buy growth stock. No, that cycle peaked out. We call it incidental manager. If you are playing that cycle right, if you are born in that cycle, you will do very well. And that's the reason all growth centric money manager started underperforming from September 2021 because they remain their portfolio in the growth stock where we shifted. Now let's come back. So we didn't have a technology stock for a long period of time in our portfolio. We have started now nibbling into it. Nearly two years later, we are buyers of some of the technology stock. Now come back to January 2023. So in February call, we made that big thing that India risk appetite has started shrinking. India was the first market where risk appetite started collapsing and liquidity which bottomed out from September uh, characteristic which peaked out. So in November 2022, it's globally bottomed out. That was inching up, but risk appetite collapsed. Okay. And that's the time we turned very cautious on the market and we have talked about and we also talked about in the month of May that between May, between June to September, we believe risk appetite will bottom out. That's one of the reasons why we launched many thematic fund in that period, it bottomed out. So good news is that India risk appetite has bottomed out, not for US, okay, not for developed market, but for India centric, it has bottomed out. We have seen extraordinary short positions in the market. I'm talking about recent phenomena, okay. Conviction level is the lowest. Nobody wants to believe this. People believe this is the top which has happened and all charters will give you a thesis lower bottoms, lower top sort of thing formation is there. So people are giving up. Okay. Yes, I also believe that easy phase of bull run is over in the small and mid caps. But we shifted our portfolio in last two months in a big way towards large cap. But as a house, we manage money dynamically, the sector rotation game which plays. S sector rotation, stock rotation is not about you have to marry it with Hindustan levers of the world or ITC of the world. Okay. These are great story. We are not married with any stock or any thesis. Asset classes are long term, stocks and sectors are not long term. Okay, so we keep on depending on the environment, whether risk on risk off. We try to extract opportunity out of that. So very important thing for for you to understand how quant manages money. Okay, we always say that generate extraordinary returns in good times. When I good times, is risk on. So April 2021, 20 onwards till September 2021. 
for, my, for us was the risk on. We generated extraordinary return and kept this return for difficult time. In risk of environment, protect your capital, that is the focus. Our, so if we, even we underperform in that period, we are very comfortable with that because that's the way we manage. In risk on environment, we play on front foot, but in risk of environment, play on back foot. We work on a concept of adaptive asset allocation. How we look at the prevailing global macro and we adapt, okay? That's a thesis which is building up. Somebody got a Nobel Prize for that, but people don't talk about that, okay? Because the whole thesis which we have taught about CapCam model, efficient market, mathematically we can show it, it doesn't work, okay? Now, the whole thesis which we want to talk about, you have to be changed, you change yourself, because the traditional approaches is not more working. That era is over because India is no more evolving. India is very mature market, okay? So in the evolving market, all sort of things will work very easy, easy to make money. India is a mature market. It's going to be extremely difficult to make money. So let me talk about few minutes on few slides. Just to share our, we talk about, uh, we, we are happy to share, we have crossed 37,000 crores of money in the management, predominantly equities, equity house, 97% is equity schemes. We have, what is very important, the MUM is important for us, what you call it AUM, we call it, because we don't ma manage any asset, we uh, manage money under management. The 38 lakh folios, which is a very decisive number, we add every month 40, 50 thousands folio, okay, we uh, every month add three to 400 distributors, IFM, MFD every month, okay, that's a, this is, is a dependent on people like you. And this is something which we are very proud of, that our retail base is very, very large. Our concentration risk in the portfolio is low. None of the distributor or none of the individual own more than 1% of the AUM. Less, everybody is less than 1% 1, 1 of the AUM. So we have around 24 schemes running now. 21 are equity scheme, 3 are, we don't have any duration product. Largely, facilitated product, the liquid in the form of majority are rated by Morningstar or Value Research. We are winner of Lipper Award in our Equity House in 2022. So let's define it. When we say quant as a money manager or as a mutual fund, what we say? Objectivity is our religion and data is God. Everything, there is no space for subjectivity. Okay? Lot of people come with a view and some myth in the market. Oh, that money manager is, ex people believe that is an extra smart guy. He knows a lot of things. Okay? As a human being, we always say, we have 20,000 deficiency. We, we are not special. We want to create specialization. We don't want to be generalists out here. So it's a myth that we know everything. We create specialists because it's have, everybody has certain limitation. No space for subjectivity. In our team also we say, don't give me lecture on your experience, on your knowledge. Show me data. Data is God. Put your view in the dustbin. In my own company, my view has no value. Data is God. Everything revolves around data. And this is what we keep on evolving. So Quant is a very evolving company, number centering organization. We talk about, the, we bring a very mint fresh approach towards data analytics, okay? And this is something we always say, educate your kids to work analytics side, not necessarily market. Analytics is the future. Everything revolves around analytics, okay? This is something we should know. So, as I said in the beginning, two things, it's all about game of probability, if you can manage your winning trades and risk management. So very proudly we say we are in the business of risk management. Returns are byproduct. If you manage your risk properly, okay, I am not believer or experience, this is my track record, this is IRY generated, this is what I expect, all bullshit. Show risk you manage very well, you will generate alpha out of it. And that is a strength which we want to educate to the people. So we talk about adding alpha and subtracting beating. And this is the essence of dynamic style of money management. This is our performance. We could be the only mutual fund okay, who is top notch in all the categories which we operate. Most of the categories, okay, if you look at three years, five years, we are number one. Uh, look at the outperformance we have given, 246%, 100%, 200%. People used to celebrate 8, 9% outperformance where the outperformance is very meaningful. What is very important? Okay, the outperformance is great, good. What is very important? What is our Sortino ratio, Sharpe ratio, or anything which is risk adjusted ratio which you look at, or the Jensen Alpha is the highest in the industry. And that is the outcome of dynamic style of money management. That extraordinary returns we have generated, we're taking less risk. Lot of people perceive Quant is a risky house. 
Quant is the aggressive house. Quant is a very conservative house. The risk adjusted numbers we'll talk, talk about. We, we don't chase momentum as a lot of people perceive. We are inflection strategists. Extreme inflection, we are buyer. Extreme inflection, we are seller. Because all our schemes are managed through as a infl inflection point strategies. Now we are launching a dedicated fund which is momentum. And momentum is not about trading, a lot of people think. Momentum is all about that we are looking at a short term horizon. So we have long term horizon product, medium term, our quantum mental is a medium term horizon which has done extremely well. Now we are long, uh, launching a product which has shorter duration. Okay, From a risk management perspective or as a diversification, you should have managed money like a treasury, how a state bank or reliance industry manage their money. Okay, So you have a decade view, medium term view, short term view, near term, hedge call, cash call, special situation, everything. If you manage multiple risks simultaneously, you will generate alpha with limited risk. This is the point which I am trying to showcase out here. I will take two. So this is the gaps of the performance with benchmark in every category you can see. There is a small cap which is nearly 10,000 crores or maybe cross that number. Okay, This is what about active, tax plan. And every scheme you will see a massive grab gaps with the benchmark which we have created. Even the liquid fund we are tier one, uh, top quartile. So, so let me, I will take was just last slide, okay. Very important data points. So as a house, we build our predictive analytics. Who built this? People built it. Okay, it's not, we don't run any algos out here, a lot of people. We are not just a quant house. Quant name means we quantify everything which affects market. So we combine qualitative, quantitative and behavior aspect. So we run our own predictive analytic thesis. We have a large research and analytics team. We have money managers. So right from multi-dimensional research, which goes to multi-asset, multi-manager as a concept to multi-variance model, all put together we say analysis adds up. We have 20 men member 20 team who manages a lot of stuff simultaneously. We, are, we don't take this a 10 years call. 10 years also call is there a small portion of our portfolio. Okay? No strategy is very decisive or skewed. That gives me better risk management approach. And the last slide I want to talk for a minute. So we run our framework called VRRT, uh, valuation analytic, risk appetite, liquidity analytics, one third weightage each. Whole industry talks about valuation analytics. People generally call it fundamental. We call it everything is fundamental in life. It's about valuation analytics. But valuation analytics has biggest problem or biggest constraint. It is dependent on one dependent variable called price. Mathematically, you have price which distorts everything. When price changes, your view changes. How to reduce this human biases? How to remove the biases of price? So we start using macro data. Two third is macro risk appetite, liquidity, or largely a macro data is not derived from stock market data. It's derived from the economic data. So that biases of remove. The way we manage is that T. T is the time. It's not about trading. T is the function of liquidity analytic, risk appetite, and valuation analytics. If we can reduce the risk by taking a multiple or a combination approach, it gives me far superior returns. And this is what we are trying to showcase that. So VLRT is our risk mitigation framework. It's not a, just a marketing gimmick. We manage me, this thing. We spend a million dollars on data analytics every year. So it'll give you a perspective. We subscribe a lot of stuff globally. We build a lot of proprietary knowledge on that. And then we manage. Okay. Thanks a lot for your time and for the patience hearing. <laughs>